Today we're going to talk about the different types of trot lines. Uh, I made some graphics that I'm not a graphic artist. My wife and daughter took great joy in making fun of me, but I'll put them on the screen. Y'all can poke fun of me if you want to in the comments. First one we're going to talk about is the submerged line. This is a line that I would recommend having 15 to 20 pound weights on each end of it. That way the fish don't drag this thing around because it's under the water. You're going to have to drag to get it back. I put 10 on the diagram, but the, I would call that a bare minimum. The most common type of trot line that we run for flathead is the open end. Now, as you can see from the diagram, that's simply where you tie it to one shore, put on your first weight, and depending on the length of the line, you may want to put a center weight down there to help keep that line down, and then a really big weight on the end. I think I put 10 pounds on the diagram. The more the better. That's 10, 15. 20 pounds even if the line's a long line. If that line's long enough and you put that center weight in, just make sure you've got, start out with like a three to five, then a three to five, and then your large weight at the very end. The other type of trot line is the closed end, which is real similar to the open end. The only difference is you've got a tie point on each side of the river and you don't have to have that humongous tail weight. You can just put three five pound weights, uh, one on each end and maybe one in the middle. The thing to remember is for flathead is follow the bottom. Because we all know there's a river inside the river which is the channel. The bottom of the river is not perfectly flat. It'll have a low spot where most of the water is moving. And if you're not careful, you can wind up setting this line to where when you tie to one bank, that first weight is not on the bottom. And say if the water's 15 feet deep, like it is here in the diagram, your line could be running across the seven and a half feet. Now I'm not saying you won't catch any fish. I'm just saying that usually when they're in that channel, they're in transition. They're moving from one location to the next location. And you want to put your bait right in front of them. So if you uh, tie off on the channel side first, make sure that weight is actually hitting the bottom. Watch your depth finder and then on the rise try to try to put one on the break going into the rise then your other weight on the other end before you tie on to the other bank because a lot of times these flathead they run the channel and they'll run they'll run that break into that shallow water and then uh, the darker it gets and the less light there is the further up they go and they'll start running the edge of the flat and you'll catch you'll catch a lot of good fish up there. A few tips I'd like to give you is one of them, don't be afraid to move your gear. If you bait a line out twice, say two weekends in a row, and when, when you run it, all your bait's still on it, go ahead and move it. You know, don't, don't set on dead water. There, there's too much water out there. Go find, keep moving till you start catching fish. And then once you see, you'll kind of get an idea of where the fish are located on your particular river system and you'll be able to zero in on them and get them narrowed down. Uh, tag your lines if it's required in your state. It is in Missouri. I'll do a video on a cheap and easy way to do this. It don't cost, won't cost you anything but a few minutes of your time. Every state's rules and regulations are a little bit different. Make sure you read up on yours and follow them. When you set your lines out, look around. Make sure there's nobody else has a line in there because uh, things can get out of hand real fast if you lay your gear on top of somebody else's and when they cut they beat you to the river and run their line first they pull theirs up and yours is going over the top and they know damn well you laid your gear over the top of theirs now, it's going to happen from time to time by accident but just try to avoid putting yourself in that situation and always make sure to build your droppers your dropper lines like I did in the other video out of a pound test that's at the most a third of what your main line is. If you're running 300 pound test main line, make sure you don't go no more than 100 on them droppers. That way if you get a hook tangled up in, in some junk under the water and you can't get it up, you can wrap the main line around a boat cleat and you'll break that dropper line instead of breaking your main line and ruin, ruin the whole set. That's all I got for you today. Catch y'all later.